Water. In California, it's been an important commodity ever since the first Europeans settled here. Left unrestricted, the snowpack in the mountains quickly melts in the spring and rushes out to sea in a matter of a few months. Over thousands of years, the native fishes in California have adapted to this harsh Mediterranean water cycle. So too have people. Some dams release large amounts of water periodically to produce hydroelectric power and to facilitate whitewater rafting. This hydro peaking creates a new flow regime with new hydraulic characteristics. A good example of hydro peaking can be seen on the Tuolumne River below the Holm powerhouse. Here, the water level or stage rises and falls like an ocean tide. This time-lapse video illustrates the fluctuation in stage. This is not only a daily disturbance in water flow, but also a daily disturbance in water temperature because the water originates from the bottom of the reservoir where it is very cold. The Clavy River is one of the last undammed rivers of the Sierra Nevada. Its waters have been left unobstructed and run wild in the springtime. To the native fish here, the surge of spring snowmelts is very important to their life cycle. Over thousands of years, they've acquired adaptations which make certain parts of the hydraulic regime necessary. The unique challenges of living in a river that is a torrent in the springtime and a trickle in the autumn has shaped some of the endemic fishes of California. Understanding their requirements allows water managers to plan hydraulic regimes that are more beneficial to these native fishes. In the past, we may not have immediately recognized the dependence we had on the ecosystems we lived in. Today, the linkages between wildlife and people are a little bit more understood. This understanding has prompted the development of new techniques to reconcile the disparity between the fish's needs and the needs of humans. Water. <laughs>